Chapter 1 A woman sat in a hotel bar, watching the door. Her appearance was neat and tidy. White blouse, fair hair tucked behind her ears. She glanced at the screen of her phone, on which was displayed a messaging interface, and then looked back at the door again. It was late March, the bar was quiet, and outside the window to her right, the sun was beginning to set over the Atlantic. It was four minutes past seven, and then five, six minutes past. Briefly, and with no perceptible interest, she examined her fingernails. At eight minutes past seven, a man entered through the door. He was slight and dark-haired, with a narrow face. He looked around, scanning the faces of the other patrons, and then took his phone out and checked the screen. The woman at the window noticed him, but, beyond watching him, made no additional effort to catch his attention. They appeared to be about the same age, in their late twenties or early thirties. She let him stand there until he saw her and came over. Are you Alice? he said. That's me, she replied. Yeah, I'm Felix. Sorry I'm late. In a gentle tone, she replied, That's all right. He asked her what she wanted to drink and then went to the bar to order. The waitress asked how he was getting on and he answered, Good, yeah, yourself. He ordered a vodka tonic and a pint of lager. Rather than carrying the bottle of tonic back to the table, he emptied it into the glass with a quick and practiced movement of his wrist. The woman at the table tapped her fingers on the beer mat, waiting. Her outward attitude had become more alert and lively since the man had entered the room. She looked outside now at the sunset, as if it were of interest to her, though she hadn't paid any attention to it before. When the man returned and put the drinks down, a drop of lager spilled over, and she watched its rapid progress down the side of his glass. You are saying you just moved here, he said. Is that right? She nodded, sipped her drink, licked her top lip. What did you do that for? he asked. What do you mean? I mean, there's not much in the way of people moving here usually. People moving away from here, that would be more the normal thing. You're hardly here for work, are you? Oh, no, not really. A momentary glance between them seemed to confirm that he was expecting more of an explanation. Her expression flickered, as if she were trying to make a decision. And then she gave a little informal, almost conspiratorial smile. Well, I was looking to move somewhere anyway, she said. And then I heard about a house just outside town here. A friend of mine knows the owners. Apparently they've been trying to sell it forever. And eventually they just started looking for someone to live there in the meantime. Anyway, I thought it would be nice to live beside the sea. I suppose it was a bit impulsive, really. So, but that's the entire story. There was no other reason. He was drinking and listening to her. Toward the end of her remarks, she seemed to have become slightly nervous, which expressed itself in a shortness of breath and a kind of self-mocking expression. He watched this performance impassively, and then put his glass down. Right, he said. And you were in Dublin before, was it? Different places. I was in New York for a while. I'm from Dublin, I think I told you that. But I was living in New York until last year. And what are you going to do now you're here? Look for work or something? She paused. He smiled and sat back in his seat, still looking at her. Sorry for all the questions, he said. I don't think I get the full story yet. No, I don't mind. But I'm not very good at giving answers, as you can see. What do you work as, then? That's my last question. She smiled back at him, tightly now. I'm a writer, she said. Why don't you tell me what you do? Ah, it's not as unusual as that. I wonder what you write about, but I won't ask. I work in a warehouse outside town. Doing what? Well, doing what? He repeated philosophically. Collecting orders off the shelves and putting them in a trolley and then bringing them up to be packed. Nothing too exciting. Don't you like it, then? Jesus, no, he said. I fucking hate the place. But they wouldn't be paying me to do something I liked, would they? That's the thing about work. If it was any good, you'd do it for free.